Later on Plugged In, we'll find out what happens to all of our electronic devices after we don't need them or want them anymore. And we'll check out research that shows a strong relationship between artistic expression and mathematical ability. But first, we'll explore artificial intelligence. Can computers learn or make decisions on their own? Plugged In reporter Brianne DeMoco asked the question, what does artificial intelligence really mean? Artificial intelligence is making machines essentially intelligent, smarter. Uh, think about how uh, computers behave uh, today. Uh, you have to think about every possible option and the consequence and pre-program all those steps. However, uh, human beings, when you look at human beings, the way they exhibit intelligent behavior, you don't have to show each and every step or program. They can uh, learn and extend that learning to circumstances that they have not seen before. The artificial intelligence field wants to incorporate that ability to computers or machines to be able to learn and exhibit smart, intelligent behavior. So how does artificial intelligence work? Artificial intelligence works uh, in a rather simple way. What we try to do is we take the, uh, for example, uh, the uh, software, which is based on an algorithm, and try to make the algorithm sense information from its environment in one particular mode and try to develop responses to those senses and make the algorithm uh, be more adaptive, exhibit properties similar to humans exhibit when they are learning. What are some of the applications of artificial intelligence? Uh, applications can be in, uh, in a variety of domains. Um, we, are, we are trying to make more intelligent cars, more intelligent robots, uh, more intelligent computers that uh, perhaps we can uh, interact in a more natural way. It's very likely that uh, when you are using your cell phone, your PDA, you'll have some kind of um, algorithm uh, exhibiting artificial intelligence aspect, therefore hopefully making the task a little bit easier. One area of artificial intelligence being researched at the University of Toledo is that of a cognitive wireless sensor network. Such a network of sensors, each equipped with artificial intelligence, could be utilized in a variety of situations, including our example today, a biohazard situation where no person would dare to tread. So one scenario is you can have hundreds of, if not thousands of these uh, sensors essentially dropped from uh, some uh, airborne device. AI, artificial intelligence, really comes into picture here. Uh, we don't have to then worry about where they land and what exactly each node will do. We kind of put a generic software program in each of these and they start this phase of, if you will, configuring or organization. It's similar to a group of people coming together for a particular mission task and they kind of choose a leader or there is some natural leader emerging uh, among the members of that group. Then the leader in collaboration with the members of the group could uh, identify subtasks and partition those subtasks among themselves so that uh, Perhaps these guys would be responsible for monitoring a particular variable like the temperature while the other ones would be responsible for a particular type of uh, chemical contaminant. And all that information at, at some point would be passed by the leader group uh, leader to this particular component which is responsible to communicate the results to maybe uh, some kind of uh, internet device, could be a satellite uplink and communicating in an ad hoc fashion with that. It's easy to see the benefits of using artificial intelligence to gather and transmit critical information inside of a hazardous zone. But what about popular culture, where Hollywood has made a habit and a lot of money, turning artificial intelligence into a villain? If you don't believe me, just ask Skynet from Terminator, Whopper from War Games, or Gort from The Day the Earth Stood Still. So I asked Dr. Serfin, is artificial intelligence something to fear? Somebody who is um, perhaps uh, deeply immersed in this field I think the fear is, uh, is really doesn't have uh, uh, justification. Even the most sophisticated systems these, uh, these days uh, at the present time, they can, they can only address a very limited task. And if you think about it, uh, all the things that a human being can do even at the minimal level, uh, we have a long way from getting to that uh, point of uh, fear, if ever. Frankly, I haven't lost even a single night of sleep uh, as a result that as a result of this particular uh, concern. So what does the future of artificial intelligence look like? Uh, I think the expectation is that uh, we want to be able to delegate these routine, dangerous and um, mission impossible tasks to robots, to intelligent machinery and ideally to be able to create more extra time to be able to enjoy life. 
if that ever happens. And I'm certainly looking forward to that uh, premise. And uh, if we can contribute to that uh, for all mankind to achieve, humankind to achieve that goal, I think that will be um, uh, something fantastic.